Hello and welcome to this Icon Data API tutorial. My name is Eve. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quant. Today's tutorial is about basics. In particular, we're going to cover symbology. We'll talk about rigs, also chain rigs, uh, conversions between different symbology types. We will also cover data fields, which allow us to exactly specify what kind of data we want to retrieve for single rig or multiple rigs. The agenda is as follows. We start with RICs, the Reuters instrument codes, and do then a bit of symbology conversions. We work with a few selected RICs. We will add data fields to the mix. And in the fifth and final point, we are going to work with chain RICs, which make life a little bit more convenient, in particular when you want to retrieve data for, let's say, all the constituents of an index. I'll go and change to my Jupyter Notebook. About symbology, you see the agenda once again, and we will do the regular imports. Uh, the major package, of course, being Icon, which we import as EK, and you will also see the versions of the major packages that we use. First important step is to connect to the Icon Data API. This assumes that in the back end, the Icon Data API proxy is running. And we already encounter here in the first real code cell um, about the topic symbology, a few selected rigs across several asset classes. You see here in this Python list, uh, for example, rigs for stocks like General Electric or Apple, also S&P 500 stock index, VIX volatility index, the Euro US dollar exchange rate, gold price, and the 10-year German Bund price. These are just a select few. Of course, there are many, many more. Rigs can be searched for, for example, in the data item browser. I'm going to illustrate this briefly, I change to this end to the Icon API proxy, and you see here the link to the data item browser. And for example, here I can now search for certain instruments. Let's say I would be interested in the German DAX index. I see a couple of hits, but the first one probably is the right one here, the primary rig, we see uh, .gdaxi would be the respective rig. Or to this end, maybe the FTSE 100, same what's true. I type a few characters here and I get the rig. Or let's say I will be interested in Apple stock. So I type in simply Apple and I get back the rig, aapl.o as yet. Another example. So really easy to look up certain rigs here via the data item browser. I close this. This is the running, of course, in the back end. Now some symbology conversions because there are different symbology types that we encounter in financial markets. Um, the ability to map between these different schemes is uh, pretty useful. So depending on which data sources you're working with, uh, you might get a different symbology, but it's kind of straightforward to convert with the help of the Icon Data API from one type of symbology to another one. The major function we are going to use is get symbology from the Python wrapper package icon. And of course, we can always look up the doc string, the help text via help. And to see here, we can provide a single symbol or a list of strings representing symbols. We specify for which symbol type we are coming and what we want to go to, like two symbol type and a few more. There are usually also some useful example that get you immediately started. Here, in my case, I'm now going to uh, first use the first two RICs for my list and convert them to ISIN, the International Securities Identification Number. It's one of the standard symbologies found in the market. 
But I can also convert uh, my RICs to multiple different output types by providing a list. Here in this case, it's the regular ticker symbol as well as ISIN. Of course, I could pass many more symbols here if I would be interested in that. In that sense, let me use my complete list with the RICs from before. And you see that whenever there is kind of a good match or best match, we see the respective results, but there's of course no guarantee that the conversion is possible. So there is no um, ticker symbol here available, for example, for the German Bund, 10-year um, reference bond of Germany. Um, and also in some other cases, we see not the number values. For some cases, we also get the error reason that we can easily look up here in the error column. Of course, other symbol types such as CEDL uh, can also be converted to RICs or ISIN, so it works in all directions if you like. And when we have the CEDLs, which stands for Stock Exchange Daily Official List, we pass in this list and you see we end up in this case here with a column representing the um, uh, ISINs here, all Great Britain oriented, so UK. We also see here the respective RICs that we can use to work within our environment here and to um, yeah to specify for which kinds of instruments we want to retrieve data. They help us navigate the whole ICON data API ecosystem as well as the whole ICON system if you work with uh, what we've seen before, Data Item Prizer, or with the um, desktop application, for example. So let's assume that we start with a few ISINs. We have these four, I don't know, maybe from the outset what this is. The only thing I can uh, see here is that they are US related, but the ICON Data API helps me with this. So here I define my symbols as a list object. I pass them to get symbology. And I request RICs as a result. And you see how convenient this is. And now we notice immediately which stocks we are dealing with, with Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Intel Corporation. We can now use the results here to retrieve historical data. That's one uh, simple example. Uh, I transform the results to a list object. I pass this new RICs list object request close values and uh, want to have end of day data from the 1st of October to the last day in January 2018. Once I've got the data, I can have a look at it. It's a standard pandas data frame, or I can have a look at the meta information, seeing that we have 84 data rows now in our data frame for the four stocks. From that on, we can use the power of the Python data science ecosystem. For example, we can normalize data first and then use Plotly in combination with Cufflinks to plot the results. So every single time series here starting at 100 and we see the relative performance over the time period and that Amazon obviously has been outperforming its peers here. If we define this as the peer group over the period, for which we have retrieved data. Similarly, we can use the RICs now to retrieve news headlines. To this end, I, I use a little Python trick. I transform the list with the single objects to a single string. This works as shown here, and this is exactly what I use in the get news headlines function. And in this string, r colon represents um, so to say the RICs in my query and exactly this is what's happening now. It takes my four RICs for the four stocks and gives me back 20 headlines for the specified time period. When I have a look here, for example, I discover something about Intel. Uh, here's something about iPhones and uh, so we can then go through the list here and see what um, uh, Rick, what symbol, what stock is referenced. Apple here is even mentioned in the header as well. Now let us add data fields to the mix. 
with data fields, we can specify for single or multiple instruments what kind of data we want to retrieve. Again, a little illustration um, based on the data item browser. I open the data item browser and Let's stick to the Apple example from before. So I say Apple, for example, and click on Apple. And now you see that here an instrument is fixed, Apple Inc. And I now get the respective data fields that are available for the Apple Inc. And you see on the right-hand side, it was retrieving the data. And now the data fields, the values of the data fields show up. So for example, the last available closing price 156.49 or when I now I'm interested in certain fields like let's say the total return maybe year to date we get here a couple of hits not the direct ones you see it's also not case sensitive so I could write year to date also in this fashion but we see here two exact hits and two others that are related so pretty convenient and not only that I can look up the data here, the purpose I'm showing this here is that we can now take the single data items or fields as they're called in the API context and define the fields, one or multiple of these, like let's say total revenue, total return, net income and so forth and request the data programmatically. Maybe also in comparison to other instruments. Whenever I delete this here, we get back to all the data fields available. So here I also have now the overview for this rig for AAPL.O, Apple Inc. What kind of data fields are available? Getting back to the Jupyter Notebook, we now We'll use get data, which is the general data retrieval functionality. Of course, here also the uh, help text. Instruments, a string, so for a single one or a list object, of multiples, and we can specify the fields. And this is what we now want to do. For our Apple stock, we're going to retrieve a few different data points. Here you again find also some examples of how to use it. I pass in apple.o as the rig, and then five fields, TR price close, volume, price low, total return year to date, and total return 52 weeks. Once the data is retrieved, I have my data frame object here in Python available. You see this is just a single line now with the five data points, latest available data. And if this error object is empty, we have no error so we have specified obviously the correct fields and for every field that we have specified for every rig um, we have retrieved the data as required so now with these four rigs from before we can do the same so i simply pass in here now this list object uh, having fixed the four data fields here and when i execute the code I now have a data frame with four rows, one row for every single rig, for every instrument. And I can easily compare the different values that we have gotten, the different data points. So for example, here, when I want to visualize the, um, the values for the year-to-day total return and the 52-week total return, this is now an easy affair. I just specify the two columns and set the index to instruments so that we get the correct X labels and executing this line, we now have a nice looking overview, which is of course also interactive due to the use of Plotly and Cufflinks at this stage. And it's an easy um, task to identify who has had the best performance. In this case, Amazon is winning, but we have seen this also uh, it's in a, in a uh, similar fashion, but just based on line plots in the previous plot. Now you might say, well, 
working with four is kind of nice. We can specify these, but sometimes uh, you want to work with more. Um, there are then the chain rigs that usually come to help because the groups that you're typically interested in are kind of associated in one way or another. So among others, we might be interested in the constituent members of, let's say, the FTSE 100 index or another index to this end. And to see that there are these chain rigs available, so zero hashtag dot FTSE gives a list of the 100 constituents, for example, there are also chain rigs which make life easy with regard to options, where we have typically multiple options across different strikes and across different majorities and so forth. So this simplifies things considerably. And the example that I want to show here, um, the final one in this Jupyter notebook, is about the constituents of the German DAX index. And to this end, I use the respective chain rig. So I would expect data now for uh, 30 different stocks. And the fields that I require is the common name, is the last cl close price, uh, the trading volume, and the total return year to date. Executing this one and having a look at the resulting data frame, we see indeed, yeah, the index goes from zero to 29. So we have retrieved 30 data rows indeed. We see the price close, the volume, year-to-date total return. And now again, it's kind of straightforward using standard um, Python data analysis techniques with pandas, for example, here again, to set the index to instrument for the X labels, then to pick out the year-to-date total return column to sort the values from worst, lowest level to best, highest level, and to plot this as a bar. So. Easy comparison. Now of the year-to-date performance, we see on the most left-hand side, the worst performer. On the most right-hand side, we see the best performer. And we have kind of a nice graphical ranking of all the 30 stocks that make up the German DAX index. This bringing me to the conclusion. In this tutorial, we cover RICs, why does instrument codes, symbology conversions between different symbology types. We work with RICs and see how we can retrieve data from multiple RICs, for example. We add data fields to the mix, which lets us specify exactly what kind of data we want to retrieve. And last but not least, chain RICs in many circumstances simplify life considerably for the data analyst because we can, via a simple RIC, so to say, or via a single RIC, we can specify complete groups of instruments, be it option series or be the constituents of um, an index, for example, just a single rig in that case is enough to get data for the whole group at once. Below in the Jupyter Notebook, you find additional links to Icon Data API developer resources. With this having said, we are at the end of today's tutorial and it remains for me to say happy Python coding and see you in the next tutorial.